If you're a beginner, starting to draw digitally can seem really overwhelming at first. But if we cut down the unnecessary clutter from the process, it's easier to focus on the actual drawing part. And there's a lot of clutter to cut down. So this part is not an easy process, but I'm going to walk you through it. First of all, let's talk about your first drawing subjects. I'm sure we all have tons and tons of really great ideas that involve epic scenes with tons of little things going on. Trust me, we'll get to those ideas as well. They are terrible starting points though. I always recommend limiting your entire illustration to one single object. This way it's actually possible to study the shape and angles of your subject for future reference. And speaking of reference, have one. Not just as a picture, but if at all possible, have the thing you're drawing as your first exercise on the table in front of you, so that you can see the full three-dimensionality of your subject. This way you get to practice composition at the same time, and it's important that you decide where this subject goes on your canvas, and it's important that you make those decisions, not some photographer on Pinterest. Composition is the only area of art that I recommend including in all other art practice work. Other than that, it's usually better to focus on one area at a time. Some people find it easier to sketch their illustration through outlines. This is probably what most people assume that sketching is. But for some people, blocking in through volume will feel more natural. What I'm showing right here, this is blocking with volume, this is sketching with outlines. Both of these approaches are equally good. So I recommend trying to draw the same subject in both ways. This shouldn't take you more than an hour to do, and it's a great way to get to know your own strengths as early as possible. Since most people tend to ask me about tools, I'm going to give my own recommendations on what kind of tools to focus on here. For the line sketching portion, I recommend having just one pencil brush to draw the entire thing. I'm using this pencil brush, but honestly, whatever line art tool that can create similar lines works just as well. When you're using only one pencil at this point, that way you can focus on what you are creating instead of battling how different tools work. And same goes for the blocking method as well. Very simple brushes work best for stuff like this. Don't ignore the default round brush, just because it's basic and it's free. It's very easy to control and that makes it perfect for this job, because it allows you to focus on the shape, and that's the whole point of this exercise. Now let's talk about those distractions. Some will look at different adjustment effects or layer blend modes. They are all great things. It can be extremely tempting to start scrolling through those options. For something this simple, all you really need is one layer and a brush at 100% opacity. When you're doing the line sketch version, you don't even need to move around the brush size slider at all. With most pencil brushes, you can control that with the pen pressure anyway, so you don't need to touch this. And as an added bonus, that will give your lines more consistency, and it will teach you how to use the pen pressure, especially when you're focused on using that only one single brush, then the settings will always be the same, and that way you can build up that muscle memory on how that brush works. I'm not saying here that you should never go scrolling through different effects and adjustments and blend modes. If you have that kind of curiosity, it can be a really fast way to learn what all those different buttons do. But they are not necessary, and none of them have anything to do with this practice that we are doing right here, which is learning to draw. So it's important to remind oneself that learning an application and learning art are two very different things. Apps are easy to learn, and art is that never-ending road. Because that learning process is always going to keep revealing new things to you, that's also what makes it so interesting. When you start to practice drawing, early wins are important. That's just one of the reasons why I recommend the first drawings to be very limited in scope and having that one single object that you are drawing. By having a single object to draw, you gain so much more focus into what you are looking at. At this point, you don't need to decide what to simplify yet. Let your eyes zoom in as close as you want. 
and you'll find that even a small cherry tree branch like this one that I'm drawing here can have an infinite amount of details once you really look at it. When you add more objects or even color, the decision on what to simplify becomes way more important. Details don't just cost a lot of time, but they also cost attention. Not just your attention, but the attention from your viewer who is seeing your artwork. You want to direct that attention to the areas in your drawing where you want people to be looking at. Those decisions make that illustration yours. You are telling us not just what we should be looking at, but more importantly, you are guiding us in how we see what you see. When I think about the whole purpose of art, this is why your art matters. It can give us a unique viewpoint. Seeing art from different creators can give us more empathy for different cultures and situations that are foreign to us. If you do this exercise several times, you can start even simplifying that one object that you are now used to drawing. And at this point, it probably comes more easily to you. And you might not need the reference at all. Like for example, if I now started drawing a cherry tree branch, I would have the experience of drawing it from reference from before. When you're simplifying your drawing, think about what elements make it read to your viewer or optionally what you want them to read. And I think this is the more interesting question. Remember that you are in total control and there's no wrong way to look at things. When I was drawing this, my lines barely connect and even the way I block in the shape is based on grouping the flowers and leaves into their own patterns. After these are done, I didn't want to leave out either from the end result, because these are basically two completely separate sketches at this point. But I just combined them on top of each other. This way I got much closer to what I had in mind in the simplification. The end result, in my opinion, is not really a realistic depiction of a cherry tree branch. Honestly, I could have just taken a picture if that was my end goal. Now it's more about capturing what I feel like is the frail and fleeting essence of this object. These cherry trees bloom only for a couple of days in the entire year. And that is what I wanted to capture. Not just the object itself, but that fleeting moment in time that these flowers represent to me. So don't ever think that just because you are choosing one single object that your storytelling is somehow limited, but that can also challenge you into looking at things differently and finding inspiration in ordinary things. And as a side note, I think this improves the quality of your entire life, not just your artistic progress, because you can find so many interesting things when you have this approach to looking at things in general. When you're done with your drawing, it's important to take a moment to reflect the goal you set out for yourself. And when you're learning to draw, I have to underline that I just said goal, not goals. When you're starting a drawing like this, you can pick one element in the process you want to improve. Do you want to have more fluid lines? Are you focusing on the line weight, how that varies across your drawing? Or are you focusing on where you're placing those details and where you're driving that attention? Once you have a single goal like this, it's much easier to review how successful you were at getting there. The great thing about digital art is that if you don't feel like you made progress in that one area that you set as your goal, you can keep working on the same illustration until you reach that point. In traditional media, you might end up ruining the entire artwork or the paper or the materials somehow. But in a digital drawing, you can just keep working on it, erase, redraw, until you get there, until you meet that goal that you set out for yourself. This self-review process is important for progress. Noticing how you progress in these areas is the thing that will keep you motivated to work. When you have multiple goals and feel like a drawing didn't work out, well, that's just way too vague to learn anything from. This is not helpful. In my art classes, at some point, I always make the students critique their own work. We need to know exactly where the composition breaks down and what can be done to improve it. Because there's always not only one fix, but there are multiple fixes that can be applied to fix that image. Just saying that it didn't turn out well, 
that is just not good enough and we need to get more specific if we want to get better at art. Notice how each goal I mentioned earlier is specific to how you draw things. Don't fall into the trap of comparing your art with someone else. Each step along the way is your own personal progress and every time you set a new goal for your next drawing, review it only based on your previous work, not someone else's. Noticing and being able to put your progress into words is important not just because it boosts your confidence, it will also improve your own image reading capabilities. That way you'll get better at setting goals that are custom made for you. I said that noticing that progress boosts your confidence and confidence is important too. That is why we have these limited tools and elements so that the progress is clearly visible. More than anything, it's important that you notice it, not anybody else. This learning process is basically endless. You can keep doing the same exercise or adding more objects or colors or techniques, but the same exercise will be at the same difficulty level every time, because that goal that you set for your next drawing will always be more advanced and of higher level than your previous ones. So it will always stay interesting, but the exercise that can remain the same. There will be more and more specific goals that you want to practice on and eventually you'll notice that you can't go down every fork in the road. Those choices will lead you into developing skills that define your style. You will get very good and specific at doing that one thing that you're interested in and that is decided by each goal that you set for each drawing. That will define your style. As you progress with these exercises, your skills will get better and more specific. You'll get great at communicating that unique viewpoint that only you have. And I hope all of us will get to see that in the future. Now, as a personal request, I ask only this one thing of you. Please don't make art just for your hard drive. Please share it with the rest of us. This drawing exercise is from a live lesson series I did with my members. All of those sessions are still available if you want to do all of the exercises. I recommend doing them all in order. If you're looking for a more advanced challenge, then I recommend taking a look at this video. I'm Mikko and I'll see you in that next video. Bye!